I'm standing here outside of Chichester Cathedral, the final resting place for composer Gustav Holtz. Holtz is probably most recognized for his work The Planets, which is a seven-movement tone poem where each one of the different movements represents a different astrological planet. He was really into astrology, and he believed that all of the different planets had a specific effect on the human psyche, and he wanted to capture that effect through music. For example, he wrote a movement called Mars, bringer of war. He also wrote a movement called Venus, bringer of peace, but probably the movement that is the most famous and most popular is Jupiter, the bringer of agility. It's a very regal sounding movement and it influenced a lot of later film composers like John Williams. Now this is what the planet Jupiter actually sounds like. You are listening to Jovian Whistlers, electromagnetic phenomena caused by lightning in Jupiter's atmosphere. They kind of sound like angry alien birds. In the 1930s, early international telephone reception was plagued by a low and constant crackling and hiss. In 1932, Bell Labs physicist Carl Jansky was able to pinpoint the location of this radio interference, the Milky Way galaxy, and thus the discipline of radio astronomy was born. Radio telescopes like this one in Arecibo, Puerto Rico, in addition to being an awesome set piece for a James Bond action sequence, pick up electromagnetic radiation. This is the same thing that radios pick up from land-based radio transmitters, except instead of radio stations, they pick up the screaming sounds of the celestial abyss. The thing is, you can't actually hear these sounds. Sound is a compression wave, which means it needs something to compress, like air, in order to vibrate. Space is a vacuum, so contrary to every TV show or movie you have ever watched, you can't actually hear anything in space. Electromagnetic radiation from the stars can be deciphered the same way that radios decipher signals from broadcast radio stations. This is called demodulation, and it can turn radio waves into sound. Andrew Huang recently did a video where he bought a device that could demodulate electromagnetic frequencies from common household appliances and technology, and then created a beat using those sounds. Let's try an experiment, shall we? Let's find a MIDI file for Holtz Jupiter, and then let's take a recording of Jovian Whistlers and then load that into sample so we can hear Jupiter by Gustav Holtz, played by the actual sound of Jupiter, the planet. That sounds interesting, I guess. Let's try something with a little bit more body and low end. These sounds were recorded when NASA probe Juno passed by Jupiter in July of 2016. So that was actually not recorded by Juno. You've been listening to a slowed down recording of Smash Mouth's All Star. Some, some, There's a point to this troll, believe it or not. The same sort of audio manipulation I used on All Star is the kind that astronomers might use to demodulate electromagnetic radiation from the stars to make it sound more space-like. When Juno actually passed Jupiter, it did record electromagnetic radiation from the magnetosphere. But in order to turn it into audio, scientists had to speed it up by a factor of 44 times and then pitch it down to the audible frequency spectrum. There simply wouldn't be any other way to experience the sound unless we manipulated it to make it sound more spacey. If it wasn't manipulated in the right way, it just wouldn't sound right. These sounds are entirely a human construction inspired by electromagnetic radiation from space. Wait a second. You mean this isn't sounds from space? I want my money back, Amazon. There's something about this that feels kind of like, I don't know, inauthentic. 
kind of tainted by human meddling. But at the same time, Jupiter doesn't really sound like anything. Sound is kind of a human construct based upon a certain kind of compression wave within a particular sort of frequency band that we can understand and relate to. The point that I'm making here is that we record space sounds in a certain way to evoke a certain emotion, just the same way that Gustav Holtz was trying to evoke a certain emotion when he wrote his piece, Jupiter. I'm gonna go a little far out on a limb here, but I would argue that the astronomers who record these space sounds are composers. They're expressing an idea, a specific aesthetic, through sound. Think about Xenakis, who created music by tracing architectural blueprints, or Messiaen, who created music by transcribing birdsong. They took information about the world around them and then molded it into something that we could relate to. Because our field of perception is so very small, especially considering how wide the bands of electromagnetic radiation are, we need to have people to mold that information so that we can understand it within our field of reference. With that in mind, I created a little beat from the Jovian Whistler recordings, using the same techniques and only the techniques that NASA scientists use with the Juno-Jupiter recordings, that is, time stretching and pitch shifting. The only difference between the two is the aesthetic that I'm trying to create. Hope you enjoy. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please comment, like, and subscribe. I have a new video coming out every Monday, so definitely stay tuned for that. Consider clicking the little bell thing down next to the subscribe button just to make sure that you're notified, because most of the time it's gonna be on Mondays, but sometimes I post vlogs and other things during the week, and I'm having a good time making these. I hope you're having a good time watching them. Uh, if you're having a really good time, please consider joining my Patreon, like these guys below. It's through their support that I'm able to do this week after week. I am incredibly indebted to their generosity. So thank you so much if you've subscribed to my Patreon. There's also occasional bonus things that I'll post up on there behind the scenes stuff. Uh, you'll get things early. There's all sorts of little bonus things that I make sure that I throw uh, my Patreon's way. In fact, I'm going to throw up that little recording of the Jovian Whistler Jam up on Patreon. So yeah, if you wanted to listen to that, I guess you now you can. So hey, anyway, um, yeah, thank you so much again, guys. It's been it's been real. And until next time, as always, base. <laughs>